Boy, oh boy, do we have some breaking news for you guys. So this is in the New York Times. FBI searches Trump's house or home in Florida. The former president said in a statement that Mar-a-Lago had been raided and occupied by a large group of FBI agents. Good googly moogly. Wow. Wow. So we're going to dive into this article, see what the reporting is right now as to um, exactly why it happened in so far as we know. Um, And let me just say the dark Brandon memes are absolutely flying around Twitter right now for good reason. (laughs) Um, so here's what they say. Maggie Haberman and Ben Protis and Adam Goldman of the New York Times. Former President Donald J. Trump said on Monday that the FBI had searched his Palm Beach, Florida home and had broken open a safe. An account that, if accurate, would be a dramatic escalation in the various investigations into the former president. The search, according to two people familiar with the investigation, appeared to be focused on material that Mr. Trump had brought with him to Mar-a-Lago, his private club and residence, after he left the White House. Those boxes contained many pages of classified documents, according to a person familiar with their contents. Mr. Trump delayed returning 15 boxes of material requested by officials with the National Archives for many months, only doing so when there became a threat of action being taken to retrieve them. Mr. Trump was known throughout his term to rip up official material that was intended to be held for government archives. Quote, after working and cooperating with the relevant government agencies, this unannounced raid on my home was not necessary or appropriate, Mr. Trump said, maintaining it was an effort to stop him from running for president in 2024. Quote, such an assault could only take place in broken third world countries. They even broke into my safe, he wrote. What is the difference between this and Watergate, where operatives broke into the Democrat National Committee? Here, in reverse, Democrats broke into the home of the 45th president of the United States. Mr. Trump did not share any details about what the FBI agents said they were searching for, but he depicted himself as a victim of shadowy forces seeking to damage him. The search took place on Monday morning, a person familiar with it said, although Mr. Trump claimed agents were still there many hours later. The search was at least in part for whether any records remained at the club, the person familiar with the search said. The reported search came at a time when the Justice Department has also been stepping up questioning of former President Trump aides who had been witnesses to discussion and planning in the White House Uh, of Mr. Trump's efforts to remain in office after his loss in the 2020 election. Mr. Trump has been the focus of questions asked by federal prosecutors in connection with the scheme to send fake electors to Congress for the certification of the Electoral College. All right, let me pause here for a second. If the documents that they're seizing have this stuff written down, have, like, the detailed plan of the fake electors thing written down, or plans to, like seize the voting machine and declare martial law written down. Um, Man, this gets serious, doesn't it? This gets really serious. And let me tell you something. When the feds are already at the point where they're raiding and occupying your place, you're kind of in trouble, dog. You're kind of in trouble. (laughs) So this is uh, shocking in a sense, um, because Trump usually seems to get away with anything and everything he does. Um, but this is quite an escalation. Quote, these are dark times for our nation as my beautiful home, Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida, is currently under siege, raided and occupied by a large group of FBI agents, Mr. Trump said in the statement. Nothing like this has ever happened to a president of the United States before, Mr. Trump said. So this is all we know right now. Um, again, this is in the New York Times reporting from Maggie Haberman, Ben Protis, and Adam Goldman. So I have some more for you. I have Trump's full... Um, comments here, his full statement he released. Let's go ahead and and dive into it. Uh, These are dark times for our nation, as my beautiful home, Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida, is currently under siege, raided and occupied by a large group of FBI agents. Nothing like this has ever happened to a president of the United States before. After working and cooperating with the relevant government agencies, by the way, I highly doubt it. I'm sure he was, you know, he was dragged kicking and screaming to do the bare minimum, and even that wasn't enough, which is why they raided the place. This unannounced raid on my home was not necessary or appropriate. It is prosecutorial misconduct, the weaponization of the justice system, and an attack by radical left Democrats who desperately 
don't want me to run for president in 2024, especially based on recent polls, and who will likewise do anything to stop Republicans and conservatives in the upcoming midterm elections. Such an assault could only take place in broken third world countries. Sadly, America has now become one of those countries, corrupt at a level not seen before. They even broke into my safe. What is the difference between this and Watergate, where operatives broke to the Democrat National Committee? Here, in reverse, Democrats broke into the home of the 45th president of the United States. By the way, let me just say that right now, I have no doubt that Ron DeSantis has a raging boner. Because this helps him more than anybody. The political persecution of President Donald J. Trump has been going on for years with the now fully debunked Russia, Russia, Russia scam, impeachment hoax number one, impeachment hoax number two, and so much more. It just never ends. It is political targeting at the highest level. All right, so let me pause here to say this. On the Russia thing, I was a massive critic of Russiagate. It seemed like uh, Democrats were out over their skis. A lot of the claims seemed kind of made up. I think I was vindicated on that front. The Mueller report um, you know, couldn't bring down Trump on anything related to Russia specifically. Of course, the people surrounding Trump were corrupt, and there were people who went down here and there for various things, but it wasn't the core claim of, like, Mueller's going to bring Trump out of the White House in handcuffs, um, and, you know, he's Vladimir Putin's puppet or whatever. I thought that was, um, I just thought it was kind of dumb. But coming from me, a person who was a critic of Russiagate, I'm also the person telling you that Watching what's going on with the January 6th committee and talking to people, including, you know, moderates and independents and even uh, some Republicans, this is categorically different in the sense that even if you say there's no criminal liability, there's definitely moral and ethical liability for what he did and how he egged it on and the things that the government was doing behind the scenes and how he was basi basically twisting Mike Pence's arm to try to overthrow a Democratic election, attempting to do a coup however, you know, incompetent it was, that's categorically different. And, you know, the thoughts are, okay, there might not be criminal liability, it might be too difficult to actually prove beyond reasonable doubt, etc. But now when you look at the FBI is raiding his home, again, by the time they're at the point where they're raiding some shit, they got some dirt on you, dog. <laughs> they got some real dirt on you. So I'm not saying anything definitive one way or the other right now. But what I am saying is, this scandal is categorically different than a lot of the previous ones. A lot of the previous ones I thought were overstated and made up. Whereas this one, if there is an accountability, it would be a tragedy. Because certainly, morally speaking, ethically speaking, a lot of wrong was done. Hillary Clinton was allowed to delete and acid wash 33,000 emails after they were subpoenaed by Congress. Absolutely nothing has happened to hold her accountable. Well, she was under FBI investigation. She even took antique furniture and other items from the White House. Okay, <laughs> antique furniture versus, like, hiding official records of shit that you did because you think it's probably illegal? I stood up to America's bureaucratic corruption. Oh my god, my ass cheeks you did, bro. My ass cheeks. This is a guy who was swimming in cash from Saudi Arabia as he turned around and gave them a multi-billion dollar weapons deal and let them skate for killing Jamal Khashoggi, an American journalist. Oh, please, the idea is standing up to corruption. He took a million dollars for his inauguration from the predatory payday loan industry. Then as soon as he got into power, he axed all the new regulations that were supposed to go into place against them. Um, and he dropped the court cases against them. I restored power to the people by cutting taxes for the wealthy people in the country and deregulating. And truly delivered for our country like we have never seen before. The establishment hated it. Bro, you are the establishment. I grant you the Democrats are the establishment also. They are a different wing of the establishment. But don't pretend like you didn't govern like a standard establishment Republican. Now, as they watch my endorsed candidates win big victories and see my dominance. By the way, it's a split. They're not winning big victories. Some of them are. A lot of them are losing. See my dominance in all polls. They are trying to stop me and the Republican Party once more. The lawlessness, political persecution, and witch hunt must be exposed and stopped. I will continue to fight for the great American people. And I love how he's got the donate thing on the bottom. Classic Trump. So, I love this tweet from um, Internet Hippo here. Law and order. This is in response to the FBI executing the search warrant. <laughs> um, here's a fact that I'm sure Trump doesn't want you to know. This is from Sawyer Hackett. For the Fox News viewers, the director of the FBI, who approved the raid on Trump's home, was appointed by him five years ago this week. 
Oops. I only hire the best people. Um, and then, of course, we got the dark Brandon memes, go memes going on here. It's over, Jack. And this is in response to just the news breaking that it was rated. Um, I got more for you, though. Okay. So Fox News currently in meltdown mode. We were told that the FBI wasn't going to get involved in any politically charged uh, search warrants, investigations, announcements, indictments. Yeah, but that, you know, the point stands. The dude was appointed by him who approved the raid. Maybe Trump just broke the law. <laughs> maybe he broke like 17,000 laws and maybe he'll get away with 16,999 of them, but, I mean, hey, they got Al Capone on tax evasion, right? Before an election. We were told that. I mean, remember what they did with the crooked situation with the server? Uh, they yeah. made all sorts of announcements then. They investigated the trial. So now the argument is, well, we think she broke crimes and got away. She broke laws and got away with it. She committed crimes and got away with it. So why can't we break laws and commit crimes and get away with it? Nice argument. Trump campaign then. Uh, you saw what they did in October by covering up the laptop, and now they're going to they're going to send agents into Mar-a-Lago before the midterm election. This is not what we were told the FBI was going to do, especially Dana, on the heels of what we just did at the top of. The they're talking about this at a time that they don't even know the specifics of why it was raided. We just went over the specifics of why it was raided. If you're going to contest it, contest it on that specifically. Say, oh, he doesn't have any documents that he's hiding. Say that. But they don't say that, probably because they can't say that, probably because deep down they know he probably is hiding some shit. The show. When we just laid out how, yeah. uh, you know, Paul Pelosi Sr., uh, suspiciously involved in insider trading with the, with the wife, Nancy, and then she takes her son to this Asian trip, tries to hide it. While okay, all totally fair. Nancy, <coughs> excuse me, Nancy Pelosi is a criminal. She's from a crime family. She's been doing insider trading for da -da 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 decades, son. But my take on that is prosecute her. Go after her. Take her down for her crimes and Paul Pelosi down for his crimes. Don't take your hands off of Donald Trump because he's probably committed a thousand fucking crimes too. Well, he's got lithium investments. He's got EV battery investments all over these Asian countries. They're, they're, just, they're just like listing Democratic criminals and crimes to try to scramble to cover for Trump. But again, the heart of the argument seems to be well, they get away with crimes. Why can't we get away with our crimes? Trying to cover it up. And, and nothing gets done with Hunter. Yeah. They're trying to push that off. <laughs> we got a Hunter Biden reference, y'all. We're 59 seconds in. Didn't even get a minute in, and we got a Hunter Biden reference. Jesus Christ. Look, I've said it before. I'll say it again. All of the uh, financial dealings and corruption involving Hunter Biden, uh, that's totally fair game. He should be prosecuted for it. I mean, he is coasting off the fact that his last name is Biden. Um, he's been involved in a lot of corrupt dealings. So he should go down for that. But unfortunately, Republicans oftentimes bring up the sex stuff and the drug stuff and the fact that he's an addict and he's got some mental illnesses. They focus more on that than anything else, usually. Make it a little just little tax thing. Make that go away. Meanwhile, we have evidence that they were holding 10 for the big guy. Diamonds are being exchanged. <laughs> There's like 150 flags from treasury that there were suspicious wire transfers coming from all these countries china russia ukraine into the biden family bank accounts that were all co-mingled and you're sending agents to mar-a-lago yeah. did they get the <laughs> they're they're in full meltdown mode full meltdown mode dress wrong dana <laughs> come on bro they these motherfuckers act like donald trump is a boy scout they act like he's a Boy Scout. <laughs> I mean, let's be serious. He should have been arrested years ago for other crimes. He was, he was a criminal before he even got to the White House. He had a whole university that was a fraud. Trump University was simply a fraud. He had to pay out millions of dollars because you can't, you can't just start something and call it a university. You need to get fucking accredited, you dipshit. He called it a university. It was a classic scam. Upselling was involved. This has been detailed. And it, he ended up having to pay out millions of dollars over it. I mean, he, he, he was very famous for stiffing a lot of his workers and not paying them. You know, before he even got to the White House, he was a criminal. Now that he's been in the White House, he's both a regular criminal and a war criminal. 
Yeah, exactly. I, I just, I'm amazed that because there's more evidence to implicate, I think, the Bidens than ever has been, uh, than actually nothing has been there for the Trumps. Everything they've accused that family of, the former first family of, it's, it seems like it's the Bidens that have done it. And just <laughs> There's nothing there, nothing there for the Trumps. Like, look, if you watched the January 6th committee, and again, originally I was sort of against them doing it because I thought everything's on video. You don't need a hearing for it. Like, we already know who committed crimes. Arrest them. But throughout the course of these hearings, my opinion has flipped. Why? Because if even 10% of what they're saying is accurate, the dude is an absolute menace. And he's a wannabe dictator. And all, of the, all this malfeasance has been exposed. If even 10% of what they're saying is true. And if you're asking me, I think probably 50% or 60% of what they're saying is true. I'm sure some things are overstated and some things are misleading. But like, oh, there's some there there, dog. And now it looks like the FBI is uh, seriously involved. And there is a real investigation. And they are much further along in an investigation than anybody previously thought because they're at the point where they're fucking doing raids and occupying his home say nothing. You just talked about uh, Paul Pelosi or Nancy Pelosi's son, his involvement in some of this green energy stuff. I mean, I know that there's an investigation currently ongoing with, you know, the Russian collusion stuff uh, with Hunter Biden and his involvement, his investment firm and what part it played, not only in some Chinese acquisitions, but also what about Hunter Biden's business dealings with the Democratic Republic of Congo in acquiring. <laughs> now they have Hunter like corruption stories I haven't even heard of. I mean, look, there might be something there. I know Hunter's a corrupt criminal, but like they're just they're just digging for anything. Democrats, Democrats are bad. Democrats are really bad. Democrats are really bad. Yeah, agreed. You know what? Investigate them. Prosecute them if need be. You know what? You should prosecute them. But why are you running cover for Donald Trump? Why are you running cover for Donald Trump? We know why. Because you're little sycophantic partisan hacks. Just going into the home of a former president, Buck Saxon here, joins me now, former CIA officer. You're going into the home of a presidential candidate. Uh, he hasn't announced yet, but everybody assumes he's running for president. And this is after they went after his campaign with wiretaps and other federal investigative raids. This is insane, Buck. Jesse, it almost feels like a preemptive coup. We've heard so much about the insurrection. And oh, yes. <laughs> Bathe in the desperation. Yes. Oh, they're so concerned about a coup. They're so concerned about a coup that they overlooked the one that they just tried to do, that Trump was the, in charge of. Come on, man. They can't have this degree of awareness. The coup, but this is preventing, this is meant to prevent Donald Trump from being able to run again. I think I'm just going into the home of... A Look, man. Look, man. Ron DeSantis is the happiest motherfucker in the country tonight. <laughs> there is no doubt about it. And they're going to, it looks like Fox News, or at least some hosts at Fox News, are trying to hitch themselves to a political corpse. Because, yeah, might this uh, further solidify the Trump base behind him? Yeah, it's certainly possible. But that number keeps dwindling more and more and more and more. And, and if anybody had a scintilla of a doubt about the guy, they might just say, you know what? Seems a little too politically toxic. We should go with the other guy. So... Jeez, it's big breaking news tonight. So here are some reactions from Trump's base online. This is from Ben Collins here. Here's the top comment on the Donald in reaction to the Mar-a-Lago raid. Lock and load. Are we not in a cold civil war at this point? Several points ago. They cry out in pain as they strike you. They will cry out in authentic pain soon. So this is like the hardcore... Trump supporters who uh, are now threatening violence, threatening violence. So, uh, but I'm going to leave you here on a optimistic note because this could be huge. So Mark E. Elias uh, tweets the following. The media is missing the really, really big reason why the raid today is a potential blockbuster in American politics. And then he cites here, um, you know, the part of the U.S. code that's relevant. It's about concealment, removal, or mutilation generally, talking about, you know, classified documents. So look at the highlighted part. And shall forfeit his office and be disqualified from holding any office under the United States. So let me explain what this means. This means if Donald Trump 
has indeed, it, it, if it's proven that Trump has taken classified or top secret documents and removed them from the White House, hidden them at his home, and the FBI finds this, that the punishment could be he forfeits his office and is disqualified from holding any office under the United States. So in other words, it would ban him from being president ever again. That's what this would do. And look, he very, he very seriously could have just been caught dead to rights. And perhaps this was the plan all along. That they knew to criminally get him for January 6th was maybe a little too difficult because um, it's hard to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he's directly responsible the people who stormed the Capitol have agency. There were a lot of people who went down criminally for what they did. But, you know, Trump spoke out of both sides of his mouth the whole time where he was saying, you know, however long into the riot he was out there saying, uh, you guys are wonderful people, beautiful people. I understand why you're doing what you're doing, but it's time to go home in peace. So he like spoke out of both sides of his mouth. It's hard to get true accountability after that. So if the plan is we'll just find a way to get him, get it so he can't run for office again. Well, if that was the play all along, then good googly moogly. It has the potential to work. And Lord knows what else they'll find in there. So again, I, you know, I'm agnostic on the criminal question. I mean, I mean, I think he is a criminal, and I think he's certainly done immoral and unethical things. But in terms of proving beyond a reasonable doubt that he's guilty of certain specific crimes. I think that's difficult. So I'm agnostic on whether or not they'll have criminal charges against Trump. But again, if this was the plan all along, I mean, this is sort of genius and it certainly has the potential to work.